in a few days time it's going to be the summer solstice so the official start of summer and it's been quite some time since we've actually shown you around the plot so what we thought we'd do is a video just about the allotment and our garden to show you where we are as we hit the summer. This is our Wickham Apiary. It's one of our two sites where we keep our bees and we have now four hives at this site. Now earlier this morning we did actually have six but having done a hive inspection we found that two of them were dead and those two were two of the three that we rescued as feral bee colonies from a building that was being demolished about six weeks ago and uh, we weren't entirely sure that uh, one of those had actually survived and clearly it hadn't unfortunately a second one has not survived as well but the third of those feral bee colonies does seem to be alive it's not particularly strong but it does seem to have survived and the good news is that the three other three hives that we have here are all now set to um, collect honey uh, one of them has a super on top which is now nearly full so that will be ready for harvesting in the near future. Probably in about three weeks time we'll harvest that one. Uh, the second hive, uh, it had a super put on it a few weeks ago. It's not started to fill with honey yet but fingers crossed that will start to happen soon. And the third hive which was here already has a super put on it today. It's a big hive, it's very strong. It was actually created from the merger of two hives a couple of months ago, two weaker hives, but we put them together to make a strong one. It is now a strong colony and we hope to get lots of honey from that one. Well, this is the view you get as you come into our main allotment. We've got our hen houses here, and this is the plot that we use mainly for looking after the livestock. As you can see, the hens and ducks have just been fed, so they're over there. And this is their midday mash that they get. And then to the right, we have our goats. And they are eating ash branches. As we were filming that last clip, another bucket load of hedge trimmings arrived, this time Hawthorn, and again that's one of their favourites. So the more food like that that we can give them, it's grown locally, the more self-sufficient we are. We grow a lot of soft fruit on the allotment here and as you can see we're looking at a really good gooseberry crop and these are gooseberry bushes that we put in two, two or three years ago and this is actually the first crop we expect to get from them and it's looking like a good one. grow a lot of sage on the allotment, quite a few herbs generally, but uh, the sage does particularly well here and it has had a fantastic display of flowers this time. These are three of our Welsh harlequin ducklings. We hatched them early this year and still haven't grown their full adult plumage yet, but they're well on their way. Now we are behind schedule with our tomatoes and potatoes, so you can see in the greenhouse there are lots of tomato plants waiting to go out. And next to it is an amazing array of Jerusalem artichoke plants and they grow there every year. Uh, no matter what you do to try and get rid of them, they will always grow back. So if you ever grow them, just assume that that bit of land will be forever Jerusalem artichokes. Now here 
under the cage. We put this in to stop the hens digging up the plants that we had here and of course it keeps it gives the weeds protection as well but we have a lot of of horseradish under here and we'll be making horseradish sauce later this year. This is the frame for the polytunnel so we haven't got the cover on yet but that has to go on pretty soon because this is where the tomatoes will go although we do have a crop of potatoes there, it's just the one line, they're, they're rooster potatoes, the red ones, good for baking. This is our fruit cage, absolutely packed full of soft fruit and nettles, so we're going to have to do a bit of weeding here, but the crop is looking good. These, I think, are red currants, or if they're not red currants, they're black currants. Well, these are definitely red currants. A few years ago we had too many plants to be able to get into the into the fruit cage so they got planted outside it and they've been fine there ever since uh, so looks like a good crop to, that we'll be picking in a few weeks time and then next to it this area that's cordoned off to keep the hens out are potato bags with would you believe it potatoes planted in them. Unfortunately we are very very late with the potatoes this year because we've had too many other things to do so uh, these are going to be a late crop, a rather late crop, a very late crop. And then we have some of our beehives. The central one is quite a well established one and the one on either side are hives that we have just established in the past week which were from swarms that we've collected. But the central hive there has a box at the top and that is where we collect the honey. So hopefully sometime in the early summer we will have the start of our honey crop. This large bed here had some lavender planted in it and we've just transplanted that to the path outside leading to the allotment and this has now all been planted out with potatoes. And next to it is the first polytunnel we have we had. We don't use it for growing anymore, we use it as an enclosure for the ducks in the evening uh, to keep the foxes off them. This is the corner of our herb garden still lots of space yet to be used so we'll be getting some more herbs planted soon and we've got two hives at the bottom of it both well established so both set to give us a honey crop as well and then behind it we have our what's left of our haystack we need to renew the crops the renew the hay supply soon and then a lovely great big lovage plant and next to it is a plum tree with lots and lots of fruit on it. Very pleased about this. Because last year we got the crop off it, but it wasn't particularly impressive. This year, lots of fruit. These are our autumn raspberries. And we've got a bit of a gap in the line of them here because our goats decided to get out and go walkies a week or so ago and uh, munched their way through some of them uh, but they haven't been too bad, badly damaged and right in the middle here we have more horseradish beautiful great big green leaves on it right down here at the bottom of the allotment we have yet more gooseberries and then next to it these are our summer raspberries and as you can see they are coming along reasonably well not quite as good a crop as last year We hatched these cream leg bar chicks last month 
and they're now about five, six weeks old. And this morning I brought them over here to the allotment to put them in this chick house. And they've been living for the past two to three weeks in the back garden, in a run in the back garden at the back home. Uh, but we needed that space for the next batch of chicks. And these ones have to be integrated with the flock of hens that we've got over here. So this is the chick house and it has seven occupants at the moment. This is the path through the allotment site where our main allotment is and we've got the permission of the owners to plant out the verges with herbs. So we put various herbs in, some as seeds such as uh, this rocket was planted as seeds and some we actually transplanted The idea is to use this verge productively and what we've said to everybody is that uh, on, on the site here is that they can come and pick the herbs as well. It's still got a bit of weeding to do which on the allotment we tend to leave for the hens to sort out but obviously not on the verge here. This is just outside our allotment and we had some lavender growing on the allotment itself and we've transplanted that out here because we need the space it was growing on to grow food. This is the spare room in our house. Now in most people's houses the spare room is where your visitors stay overnight but in our house this is our incubating and brooding room. This is where we hatch our eggs and we keep our chicks for the first few weeks before moving them outdoors. Now we have in here some of our quail and we are currently building them a big outdoor aviary and that will be ready shortly uh, but in the meantime they're in a temporary cage here in the spare room and we also have at the moment some duck eggs in the incubator these were eggs that were laid by our ducks a few weeks ago and they've got about uh, two weeks to go before they're due for hatching and then we've got our chicks here uh, these are 12 chicks that hatched about two to three weeks ago and these chicks are going to be moved today to the great outdoors. This is the chick box that we use for putting the chicks temporarily in the, the back garden. This is their little shelter and uh, we put it in a run here on the back lawn. This hutch in our back garden is here to house the first batch of quail that we hatched earlier this year and there are five birds in there uh, one male and four females and they're going 
to the aviary as well once it's built. But we're keeping this out in the back garden for the moment and once the baked aviary is up this hutch will form part of the shelter inside it. This is our back garden. Uh, we don't use much of it for food production but we've got odd bits where we do grow a bit of food and for example on our patio here we've got these strawberry planters and we actually took most of the strawberries out of the allotment uh, about three months ago and transplanted them into these pots that can stack up on top of each other and into these bags with holes in the side and they're doing rather well. We've got a couple of potato bags on the patio here with absolutely no potatoes in so they're going to be weeded and I'm going to put a quick crop of potatoes into them. We have a bay tree in the back garden which we planted a few years ago as a tiny little plant and is now enormous and some rosemary. These are our broad beans which we decided to plant in the potato bags over here rather than on the allotment to make sure they weren't destroyed by the hens and they're doing rather well. We're here at Dad's allotment up at Marley Hill. Now this is the allotment that we do most of our vegetable growing because it's away from the hens and the ducks so it doesn't get the vegetables don't get wrecked by our marauding, marauding poultry. Um, however, as you will see, I have a bit of a confession, which is that we need to do an awful lot of weeding here. Well, the cabbages are in and they're doing well and the grass and the weeds are doing well as well. But uh, over here we have some onions and the soft fruit which we also grow down on our main allotment is doing reasonably well this year. Not quite as good as last year though. And this is the bottom edge of the allotment and as you can see major major clearance work needed here. Well that's it, that's how we're doing at the end of the spring and I'm going to leave you with a little view of something that's just happening back home. The first of the ducklings in that batch we showed you earlier are just starting to hatch. Seven ducklings, and uh, they're quite lively. One egg left to hatch. <laughs> 